信してみんなの心に戻るんだだけど僕も一緒に行くそれはお願いウィリーを助けたいんだ分かった<笑>はいもう本気だなロングドーンもちろんメガドラックで潜入してウィリーを救出するんだメガドラックの内部は弱点を探したけど大体頭に叩き込んであるしかし対トランスフォーマーホールドセンターが張り巡らされているようおそらくルイリーの閉じ込められている部屋はシールドが貼られているだろうだから僕が行かなければいけないんだ<笑>しかし危険すぎるそれはでは俺が言いたいのはダニエルを連れていくからには覚悟はできていたということだ今でもないだろう命の僕の残念を守るそうか分かっただが司令官には黙っていてくれアレンジブラスト使い方分かってるなはい藤よ、うんダニエル、急ごう分かった分かった負けしまったら脱出するのが問題だどうする俺は考えたありよ申し訳ないがトレインボットに手伝ってもらうんだ Okay, here we go.、Uh, the sound you're hearing in the background is Transformers Headmasters, which、um, I finished watching last week. Really enjoyed it. And sort of to、uh, say goodbye to the series, I decided I would draw.、Um, one of the main characters、uh, from the series, which is Six Shot. Um, if you haven't watched it,、uh, apologies for the spoilers, but、uh, he's, he's got a, an interesting arc,、um, a little bit of a redemption arc. But、um, anyway, yeah, I, I've always liked his look, and、uh, I just figured I'd do a little, little six shot piece to say goodbye to Headmasters. So I, I think I streamed for about an hour on. Monday, I guess, to,、uh, to do this. And、um, yeah, so here we go.、Um, who's here? We got Clock Fox. Hello, Clock Fox and Zombie Prowl. Good to see you guys today. Um, one of the things I, I thought I would do is、um, write his、uh, Japanese. Or write his name in Japanese characters on the、um, image itself going、uh, vertically here. So I pulled that up for reference and、uh, I'm probably going to butcher it, but we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try it. It's eight characters essentially, so I'm gonna kind of do a little box here and just kind of divide it into eight. Even pieces. Maybe I should actually run it down. I should get rid of this little shine that I was going to do there and run it down all the way down to his、uh, shoulder area. Hi there, Namish Name. Doing okay today? I hope you're doing well. So, eight characters. Boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay. So the first one is like a.、Um, I apologize if there's any folks watching this in、uh, Japan now.、Uh, let me know if I'm screwing anything up too bad.、Um, I'm taking this from the,、uh, the box, the Japanese box. Uh, from the toy, and、um, I also just to kind of double check, I, I threw it into、uh, Google Translate. I just wrote out six shot, and, and it came up with these same characters.、Um, so, and I'm going to be doing a、uh, sort of like a reverse, you know, the, the characters are going to be white, and the background around them will be black. So, Um, 
Yeah, and I'm probably making it a lot harder on myself by um, doing it uh, vertically, but I sort of decided I wanted to do it after I started drawing this, and there's not really a good place to do it horizontally without making the letters really small. I thought this space here would be good to, um, to do it there. Let's see. Hi, Mushy Carrots. Uh, good to see you again. Yeah, I'm doing doing okay. Uh, hello, Design OW. Thanks for checking in. So, you probably didn't log on to see me drawing uh, Japanese characters, but here we are. This one is straight across. And down like this. There's a lot of, I guess, most of these letters have this uh, diagonal slash as part of them. And again, I apologize if I'm, if I'm butchering any of this. I thought it would be a fitting uh, tribute to watching the uh, Japanese series to write his name in Japanese. Um, and I did, when I watched it, I did listen to the original, as you can hear right now, the original uh, Japanese soundtrack, as opposed to the horrendous um, English dub that is also available on this DVD. I, I really wanted to hear it how it was meant to be heard and you know I'm probably taking this way too seriously for a cartoon but I really enjoyed listening to it that way we have sort of a uh, what looks to be like a backwards E happening here like maybe a little bit longer would be appropriate. And then another one of these, like the second letter. Uh, this is uh, Six Shot's name in Japanese characters. I, I grabbed it from the toy box. Might have been in one of the uh, Encore reissues or something like that. Which now that I've watched this, I wouldn't mind uh, getting my hands on one of those. I did have Six Shot when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, one of those toys that just, just got away. I didn't have, like, you know, I guess I, I, I had a lot of Transformers. I don't, I never, like, counted them, but I didn't, I always, like, probably every kid of my generation, I wanted them all. And, uh, obviously that's not realistic unless your, uh, family is filthy rich, but, uh, you know, Looking back, especially watching these, uh, uh, you know, Headmasters and starting Master Force, I'm like, I had more Transformers than I thought I did. Like, I had, um, Cloudburst and Landmine, and I had, um, what's the name of, uh, Submarauder. That was his name, right? The one they call uh, Gilmer, I think, in uh, Master Force. Hello, Destron Decepticon. So I'm going to try not to be too... Um, like, super... Uh, I want to be a little loose with the strokes here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, 
Japanese characters that are done with a brush that are, uh, you know, very loose in uh, structure. So I'm going to kind of follow that a little bit, even though I'm doing it reverse. I'm not using a big brush. I'm, you know, doing the absence of a brush here by just using the negative space. I'm sure whenever I share this online, some folks will let me know if, uh, if I've made any errors. The uh, wonders of whiteout or Photoshop will help me to correct them. I'm hoping I can finish this today. I'm going to stream till about 3 like I normally do, 3 my time. Um, which is in a, about an hour and 10 minutes. We'll see how we do. Good to you, Whirly Bird. Are you uh, fluent in Japanese or, uh, you know, familiar with uh, writing Japanese uh, characters? Kanji, is that correct? Either way, you made me feel a little better about it, so <laughs> thank you for that. The themes are great. I love them. This is one of my favorites, uh, the Headmasters. I think so far uh, I would rank them Headmasters, then Victory, then uh, Master Force, but I'm sure that might change as I watch more of the other two. So, um, Whirly Bird, then do you, uh, you can, you can read this and this, this looks accurate to you. That's good to hear. Get in the out, excuse me, the outline for the rest of these, uh, the rest of him, I guess, and uh, then move on to some of the um, dark background. It's going to be basically against a uh, starry backdrop. That's why the uh, Letters are going to be in white against a black uh, starry background. Yeah, I'm hope uh, I'll hopefully rewatch it myself someday. Um, I have uh, watched a few episodes with my son, um, but he's too young to read. So we watched the English dub, which 
I think he's also a little too young to realize how horrendous it is, but, um, you know, maybe someday when he's, uh, more uh, fluent in reading, he'll want to go back and watch it with me and give me a good excuse. When you got kids, they're a nice excuse to watch cartoons and play with toys. I'm just going to get the, uh, all the outlines up at the top, and then I'm going to do some little, uh, shinies up on top. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh. Sometimes I wish wish I would have taken the time to do it when I had more time to do it. But, you know, I don't regret anything that I was actually doing during my younger years. But, you know, now that I have bills and jobs and a family and a house and all that, you know, it's a lot harder to make excuses to watch cartoons and play video games, even though I still love them. That other pen, I have a, I have two of these uh, zebra pens in my current rotation. One is more frayed, which can be good for getting like certain effects and stuff. But I decided to switch it up to this one, which is newer. It's the frayed one is really just getting getting a little too rough. My favorite video games, well, they're they're all very old um, because I'm very old. Um, but probably my my all time favorites would be. Uh, Final Fantasy 6 slash 3, it was 3 in the U.S., 6 in Japan. Um, Super Metroid, I think, is still just so playable, super fun, great uh, atmospheric sound and music. Um, Link to the Past, I loved Link to the Past. Um, all, all the old school games like that well not all of them but a lot of them um, yeah SNES was probably my, my favorite go to uh, um, system I guess so most of my favorite games were on that, although, you know, I do have fond memories of, you know, the original Sonic on my Sega Genesis, of course, you know, being a young male, <laughs> at, I shouldn't say that, that's a stereotype, but, you know, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, those games were, like, super uh, prevalent with me and my friends, we all loved that, loved those games for you know, they were fun, I guess. <laughs> I'm already saying too much, I guess, or the wrong things. But, um, yeah, most of the uh, SNES and Sega Genesis era and early PlayStation games, Final Fantasy VII, of course, I loved. Um, followed up six. Um, Mega Man, I loved all the Mega Man games. Well, I shouldn't say all of them. First one, second one, uh, third one, Mega Man X. So. 
So, yeah, off the top of my head, those are some of my favorites. I'm sure I would, uh, if I were reminded of some others, I would be like, oh yeah, I loved that too. But if it was a popular game in the um, 90s, I probably played it. And if it was a good game, I probably liked it. I think final. Do you play any uh, any other RPGs? It's kind of a unique thing if you haven't. Like some people love them, some people have no time for them. Um, I think Seven is a great game, no matter who you are, because it's a it's a good story uh, that you can really get invested in. I forgot this is my Copic that's running low. Bionic Commando, yes, I had that. That was fun. That actually was a game that I, I got and I played a little bit and I kind of like couldn't really figure it out or get the hang of it too easily and I put it down for a long time before I finally picked it back up again and tried tried again and you know, second second time around I was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I'm into it. Exploding Hitler head at the end was a nice... Uh, Nice touch. Great for kids. The Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, it looks real nice. I, I find probably, again, probably because I'm old, um, whenever I see footage of the remake, it just makes me want to play the old one. I don't, I don't have a lot of desire to play the remake. I, I don't know if it's just because the technology has just evolved beyond me at this point or, or what, but it just makes me want to play the original. Can't be that old. Well, I'm 42, so I don't know how old that is in, in anybody's eyes, but, you know, that's where I'm at. I was old enough to have uh, the Atari when that was the only video game system around. And the uh, NES was like magic, man, when I first got that. A couple friends had it, and I went to their house and I played it, and I was like, this is just the greatest thing ever, just playing Mario, Super Mario Brothers. And when I finally got one, I was like, oh, just so thrilled. Not much older than you. All right, well, that's good. I think a lot of uh, folks in the Transformers fandom that started out with the with G1 or whatever are, you know, obviously around the same age. So I know I'm not alone. Or even if you came into it later, there's definitely a portion of the fandom that's around my age, give or take. I made that flash, that shine on his head a little too intense. I'll probably tone that down before I'm done, but I'll stick with it for now and see how everything shakes out. So I, you know, take the take the big fat marker and just get as close to the lines as I can. And then I'll go in with a thinner marker to tighten it up because these have a ten tendency to bleed in just a little bit. I don't want it to actually bleed into the to the lettering.
Yeah, my kids were like exposed to all the older systems as well. I think my daughter has a, a good appreciation for uh, for kind of the retro look of games. And she kind of chuckles at it sometimes, but um, she has a um, a switch with the uh, the account where you can um, play some of the retro games from the NES and the SNES. So she's been enjoying a few of those. Colored version of Starscream floating above Cybertron. Yes. Okay, that was... Uh, I did that for a print with uh, John Paul Bove, my brother from another mother. And uh, I did offer up the line art to that at one point. I'm not sure um, where it uh, got off to, but... Um, Shoot me a message or something, and I'll I'll share it with you. Notice some of the music from Headmasters leaked over into Master Force, but there's also some new, new tunes in Master Force. Uh, what kind of paper is this? This is uh, Strathmore 300 Smooth Bristol. It was cut down from uh, an 11 by 17 sized page to 8 by 10, which is kind of what I've been doing. I used to order the 9 by 12 pads and then order the 11 by 17 pads because, you know, that's what size uh, comic covers and pages are. Um, but then I just got a cutting board and decided I'd just order the one size and cut it to what I want. That's why you've seen like some 5x7s, some 8x10s, 8.5x11s, 5, did I say 5x7s, five five sketch cards. You know, it's easy to just make whatever size you want without having to order a bunch of different pads to support that. Would I be upset if you asked for that picture too? Uh, no, shoot me a message and, and uh, I'll uh, send it over. Send me like an, an email to send it to. Anytime I mess up when I'm doing this, when I've been doing this live, I uh, I want to say oops out loud, and then I'm I always think like if you're like a tattoo artist or something, <laughs> you really can't do that. You can't say oops when you're in the middle of tattooing somebody. I don't think that would go over too well.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll tone down that shine a bit, but we'll see. We'll see. Go back to uh, getting the basic lines around the rest of the uh, rest of his uh, features here, and then get that pesky pencil out of there. You know, I've mentioned before when uh, when I start getting making progress on one of these, but there's still the uh, pencil lines there and they start to smudge and just really make the whole thing look messy. I, that's kind of one of my pet peeves, I guess. I don't like that smudgy pencil all over the drawing, so I usually erase the pencil as soon as I have enough of the inks down that I can go without them. I would actually normally uh, not erase the, uh, or I would erase the pencil before I um, colored in the space above black. Hmm, let's see, actually. Make a darker spot here. I find it funny, one of the plot points, the big plot points for, uh, the Headmaster series was uh, the Zarek shield. Zarek was trying to make, you know, the shield the Scorponok toy came with was supposed to be like enhanced with some kind of metal and made G metal and made super strong. But he had the shield all along. He just wanted to enhance it with G metal to uh, counter Fortress's master sword. Which my son was a little confused about because of Zelda. We played Zelda together. Several of the games we've played some of, but we played through all of uh, Ocarina of Time. And of course, the Master Sword has been a thing in Zelda since pretty much, well, since the first game. So it's like, Master Sword? Fort Max has one of those too? It's not quite the same thing. Uh, you've had trouble erasing the pencils without smudging the ink. Well, um, what I do is, you know, obviously I make sure the ink is all dry before I take the eraser to it, but these uh, the Micron pens dry pretty quickly on this paper. And uh, so do the... Um, the brush pens that I use. It doesn't take long for them to dry, so um, if I've left left it alone for good, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, I can usually take the eraser right over it without smudging any of the inks. I'm also, uh, I go pretty light with my pencils. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, press down too hard. I just use an HB lead, but, um, you know, there's, I don't really have to hit it too hard with the eraser to get rid of them. So I don't know if that has something to do with it or what, but 
Probably it does. All right. All right, now he's got kind of a roundish bit underneath this piece of his chest here. I'm just going to kind of, we only get a little piece of it there, so we're just going to basically do a hint of it. And I'll uh, darken in that after I erase the pencils. You know, when I was younger, I used the uh, the dip pens a lot with the India ink, and, and it was so hard to wait for it to dry, especially when you're you're covering a large uh, large space um, with a brush or whatever. I usually use like the Higgins ink. That was the brand that I could get at the local store. But I just remember it like taking forever to dry when I was waiting to erase my pencils. So it was kind of annoying, but necessary, uh, necessary thing, I guess. All right, I think, oh, I got more detail on the shoulder that I forgot about. The, um, I haven't gotten to, I watched two episodes basically of Master Force at this point, and I haven't gotten to the point where the Headmaster Juniors officially make their debut, but I'm going to guess that they also shout head on when they transform, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> I got used to hearing that. Transform head on. It sounds weird when you hear transform without it now. When I hear it, I should say. All right, let's get rid of this uh, pencil here. I think I can manage the rest without it. So what I use is a kneaded eraser. And like I said, I don't put my pencils down too hard, so it really does not take a lot of pressure to get rid of them. Just boom, boom. I try not to press too hard anyway, but Especially in the, the darker areas, I just kind of like go as lightly as I can. The pencil comes up pretty easily. I don't really have to grind it in there. The other thing I like about the kneaded eraser is there's no dust. You know, you use the, um, you know, whatever, magic rub or whatever, the, those white erasers and, uh, you know, the, the sort of crumbling rubber erasers. There's just like... It's crud everywhere, which 
I'm not a big fan of. So the kneaded erasers, I love them. They're great. After a while, if you've never used them after a while, they get they get darker the more pencil you put into them, obviously. It almost reminds me of like silly putty. You know, you're like, you can like print the newspaper or copy the newspaper print on silly putty. But, um, you know, the pencils, it doesn't go away. It's, it's like in here. So after a while it gets kind of dark and the, the texture and consistency changes and you gotta switch them out. But I find the kneaded erasers to be the most effective for, for what I'm doing here. Almost there. All right, that'll work for now. All right. Just getting out reference here to uh, take a look at some of the details I can add. Some of the things that I like to do is uh, I like to work from the animation model whenever I can, but then you get to a point, especially with a closer thing where like you know, th this was meant to be animated, so there's not a lot of detail packed into a lot of these open spaces. So then I'll, on top of the animation model, I'll go back and find, uh, you know, the toy, toy images and uh, use some of the details from the toy. Anyway, looking up reference is like such a uh, huge part of this job. <laughs> Sometimes uh, IDW or um, uh, Volta will send reference for the characters you need to draw, but also a lot of times you're on your own trying to trying to find reference for whoever it is you're drawing at the moment. And that can be a real time suck right there. So drawing the details on the wing, what I'm essentially doing is lining up the perspective with the connected shoulder area and kind of going up to find about where where that would start and then I'll go from here this isn't like real perspective work it's just kind of like i don't know assuming perspective like i'm going to carry this over and change the angle just very slightly so up here I put in the uh the matching lines on the other wing and I'm just sort of like eyeballing it as far as the distance apart they should be. 
And I'll give a hint of this other piece up here, matching up with that. All right, so we'll just kind of continue to chip away, adding little little details here and there in the open spaces until I feel kind of satisfied with how it's looking. I feel like these spaces here need a little something, so I'll just do a slight indent. Yeah, I, I agree. Some of the screenshots you find are, are pretty low res, um, and yet yeah, it is hard to find some some of the reference you're looking for. But this, uh, if you're looking to draw G1 animation models, I can't uh, recommend the Arc book enough. I know it's out of print at this point, but if you can get your hands on it, it is awesome. It's uh, this one here, if you haven't seen it before, Complete Arc, and it's got everybody. US, US series, Japanese series. The book is like thicker than a phone book. The Battle Beast, Jinrei, King Poseidon, lots of stuff. This is great. If you ever have a chance to pick that up, I highly recommend it. The, um, sorry about that. The, uh, the low-res images I find are usually when I'm looking for uh, colors. All right. Let's throw in some extra detail here. This kind of middle chest area on the toy is like, there's a ton of detail on there, which they obviously couldn't replicate on the animation model or else the anima animators would all pull their hair out. But I'm just gonna add a few little bits of it, maybe kind of my own sort of halfway version of it. Just to fill in some of the space here. Like he's even got like a circular thing going on down here. Let's use, uh, I guess we use the 60 degree angle here. It was an ARC 2, which I don't have, so the uh, the original ARC has, looks to have all the uh, Master Force and Victory and uh, stuff like that, unless I'm mistaken. And maybe it doesn't have Victory in it, but it definitely has Master Force and um, Headmasters. Oh, 
Why is my camera wiggling so much like that? I think my chair is bumping the uh, table it's attached to. All right, I think that'll do for, for now. I might mess around with this after the stream and, and just kind of tweak parts of it here and there, but um, I think that's enough detail to add there in, in that part at least. I usually add some sort of texture to the uh, sort of like wiring that goes in there in the neck. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, we got Fortress transforming over there. I couldn't remember, um... I couldn't remember um, if Fortress ever had his head come off, turn into the small robot, which in the U.S. was Spike. Um, I looked it up after I finished the series, and apparently they did show Fortress's head. I think it was only in the flashback when they first uh, basically went to Planet Master. But Fortress's head never really comes off during this series. Fortress himself doesn't do a lot of fighting, but um, I still liked how they how they wrote Fortress, how he was handled in the show. Add a little shadow underneath the uh, top here. Yeah, the arc uh, it did cover um, some of the alternate uh, heads for some of the characters alternate bodies alternate heads all right now this part in the middle is darker so I'm going to add a few heavier shadows in here bottom of this piece bottom part of this roundish piece here bottom there even down here I'll just kind of add a little shadow there break up the monotony of all the all the shapes and then in here of course which I'm getting off camera is um, it's darkened in there let me think should I make these hollow I'm gonna make these hollow Darken those in all the way. Yeah, all these like geometric shapes in here, you know, they, they can kind of just jumble together or, you know, just not look messy, but, um, you know, they don't 
they don't stand out as much. Uh, there's a lot of value in throwing in a big old hard shadow somewhere just to uh, reinforce uh, the shape and where the lighting's coming from and all that good stuff. Just every every piece that uh, is uh, facing downwards, I'm just gonna kind of put in in a hard shadow. Cause this area is a I don't think it's actually a black, but it's a very dark gray in the toy and the animation model. So we'll just roll with that. This pen is almost dead. Thank goodness. Um, they came back in stock at brushpens.com. This, I think, is actually a greenish color over here, but I'm still going to hit the underside with a hard shadow. And inside this little groove here, I'm just going to kind of run a darker line through there just to reinforce that that is an indented area because you can't really get that detail with the angle he's at here. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I didn't, didn't see your comment probably when you first posted it, but yeah, your eyes just kind of glaze, glaze over the whole thing. It's just like a mess of parts and shapes and pieces. Adding the hard shadow really, really kind of separates, calls out parts of it. Which, um, is Black Zarek in, um, any of these animes, Master Force, or, um, Victory? Or was that a, uh, manga-only character, toy-only, toy and manga? Um... He's one of those characters like uh, like Artfire and Stepper. Like when I found out that he existed, I was like, "Holy crap! They made a repainted Scorponok in Japan!" Like, what? It's so unfair that we didn't get that here. Stepper, Sound Blaster. Once once the internet became a thing, and I found out that those things existed, I was like, "Oh man, wish I could have had that." It's not in Headmasters. I watched that whole thing. Uh, Zarek, Mega Zarek is in Headmasters. Which is basically Scorponok. Um, Alright, what do we think here? Let's, let's 
do an interactive thing. Uh, the the shine coming off the back of his head. Too much? Just right? I can tone it down a little bit. Sounds like we're going to leave it then. I'm going to bust out some uh, white out. Still waiting on my uh, my pens. I have this here, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's not my favorite, but it works in a pinch. So we're just going to add some stars up here. Just really lightly tap in the uh, dark space up here. I was planning to do the toothbrush thing on this one. It's, you know, I feel like it should be a little cleaner. I do want to bust out that technique again uh, on a future stream, on a future piece. Because I think that, you know, can be a really cool effect. Which I don't do a lot, you know, it's... Most of the stuff I do for print is just... Just draw the character, draw draw what I need to draw, and um, especially with you know any sort of uh, natural element like clouds or space or whatever. It's just so easy. I shouldn't say easy. Uh, assume the colorist has it easy, but um, you know it's so much more effective to just drop in a. Uh, field of stars behind the character or clouds especially like I know I appreciate you know I appreciate good hand-drawn clouds but at the same time like doing um, doing the uh, kind of photoshopped in clouds can just look really cool some of that. One thing I always do after I dip the brush, I'm assuming most people do it, but uh, I just dab it down on a separate piece of paper so it's not like super chunky. I'm talking like uh, I know a lot of you all are artists as well, so don't ever take it like, you know, I'm trying to tell you what to do. I'm just kind of talking about my process out loud. for those who, who want to hear it. This is uh, a lot easier with a good pen because with the brush, like, if I push down just the slightest bit too hard, I've got a giant blob of white. So, just gotta be super delicate with the, with the brush. I mean, I've downloaded some cloud brushes before, and yeah, they're just too too uh, too good not to use them sometimes.
Add a few more smaller stars over here. I'll add a, a bit of a starburst up at the top too. brush cleaned off properly. There we go. The uh, white ink I'm using is actually really old, so sometimes it, it uh, clogs up a little too easily. Do a little, uh, little one over here. And then to get, get that odd number, which for some reason in my brain I need to have, I'll throw another one down here. That'll, uh, you know, combining the uh, big old sparkles off of, coming off his head with the three little shining stars here. That'll five total kind of big objects up here. I guess that'd be six counting the words, but whatever. <laughs> so feels pretty good. All right, let me take a peek at his character model again real quick. It's like he actually, I forgot he actually had uh, black hands or dark gray. Maybe there's something I can do to this hand down here. We got about a little over 10 minutes left before I have to sign off. So I'll just kind of spend the rest of the time just kind of tweaking this a little bit. Thank you, Whirly Bird. I appreciate you all taking the time out of your, uh, your days, whatever time of day it is where you are, to, uh, to hang out. Check in. It's nice we're getting a little uh, familiar crowd here. So that's good. Maybe I will. Should I or shouldn't I? I think I will. I'm actually going to. Darken out the. Uh, Front part of these, these digits here. That's right, go big or go home. Or just work till you run out of time. <laughs> Am I off camera again? I got. 
I got you all set pretty close to the uh, to the drawing there. Sounds like Daniel's getting in trouble again. Daniel and Wheelie always uh, making things harder for everybody else. I love how Daniel's parents just kind of let him fly into deep space and get into these giant battles with the Decepticons. Like, oh sure, Daniel can hang out inside uh, Fortress while it turns into this giant robot and fights other giant robots in the middle of space. That seems safe. Good parenting there, Spike and Carly. Or Sparkle, if you watch the, or if you listen to the English dub. I'm assuming they just listened to, the, whoever came up with the names just listened to the Japanese pronunciation of Spike. Which is like, it kind of adds that extra syllable at the end, like, uh, it's like su supaiku or something like that would be how it would be pronounced in uh, Japanese. But somebody misinterpreted that as sparkle, <laughs> which is hilarious and weird. Sparkle, yeah, you didn't know? Sparkle is how, how his name is translated in this. Well, there's a lot of good ones. I, I Some of them, yeah, I, I have no idea where they got them. Blur. Blur was in a lot of the early episodes. He's called Wally. Blaster. Blaster's called Billy. <laughs> I just kind of threw out some regular old, uh, you know, American English sounding names. What are some other good ones? Billy, Wally, Sparkle. I know there's more, I just can't think of them right now. At least I think there is. in with my uh, 005, add a few little cracks and, you know, scuff marks, which as if you've watched enough of these, you know I like to do. Yes, that's it. New sound wave. <laughs> sound wave is resurrected into new sound wave. And, uh, so Blaster uh, basically turns into Twin Cast, but instead, the way it works out in this is his name is Billy, and he's instead of Twin Cast, they just call him Blaster when he's resurrected as Twin Cast. I'm sure a lot of it was just like, you know, not whoever did the dub didn't have the right resources to really translate it properly. But it's it's pretty hilarious how poorly done it is. I'm sure all the actors tried their best, but it's a little rough. Right. Oh, I've got my old number five here. Double O five, I should say. There we go. Oh, 
心を開いたしかしエプソンが地球を守るため戦わなければならない Just、uh, throwing in a few spots of like this mid grade, mid grade shadowing here. It kind of adds an extra bit of depth and dimension to it. Oh, really? Do you have any、uh, good examples of that? I'll add some little vents here because why not? I made it up, so I'll just make up that there's little vent bits there. All that circuitry in there has got to cool off, right? Oh, yeah, I always add some scuff marks to the fingers because, I mean, really, if you got metal hands and you're punching other metal, <laughs> it's going to get dinged up a little bit. <laughs> Ricardo Tapia. Uh, it's interesting that they would、uh, change, change their names completely. Transformers had a presence in Europe for,、uh, you know, later G2 or whatever. You have all those weird European Generation 2 ish action mastery type guys.、But、who knows? Who knows if they had a translated cartoon in Spain? Profile image for the character?、Uh, I don't know, but、uh, thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess、um, 259 by my clock here. Let's just kind of take a good look at this. Probably should have darkened up the stars a little bit. I might, or the、uh, dark behind the stars a little bit. I might go back and do that, but here's what we wound up with for,、uh, I don't know, maybe.、Uh, We'll just say it was about two and a half hours total. 
Probably could have rushed through it quicker if we wanted to, but um, we just kind of took our time and made it work. I think it looks pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I would have to say I'm I'm much more of a fan of Six Shot after watching Headmasters. Um, even though like some of his motivations were confusing and weird, but you know they they did a nice job. The voice acting was good. I mean, I can't tell what he's saying, but the uh, you know the tone of voice and everything was really good. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed watching Headmasters, and uh, if you haven't watched it, I'd recommend it. If you like G1, if you watch G1, um, it's, it basically just throws out the rebirth like it never happened and starts essentially, I guess, after the return of Optimus Prime and, you know, introduces the Headmasters in a totally different way. Some of it's kind of weird, some of it's very cool but it's different but if you if you live through g1 if you had some of the toys it was a lot of fun to watch um i just watched like an episode a day for however long it took i think a few days i got into episodes but um yeah i'd recommend it but yeah that's that's why i drew six shot here and uh yeah that's what we wound up with so thanks for uh, hanging out for this. Thanks for interacting and everything. It's it's always great hearing from you all, and and I enjoy uh, enjoy uh, going back and forth with you. Um, so have a great rest of your day. Have a great Thursday, and and I'll probably be back on Friday at some point to do another stream. Be good to everybody. Be good to yourselves. Um, be safe. And, uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.